I was born into an ordinary family. My mom passed away when I was small, so I was raised by the single dad. I met my husband at work, where I was employed as a product development manager. It was a monta business organization focused on the food industry, and owned by his family. He praised the dish I created, saying it tasted the best. That was the start of our relationship, and before I knew it, we were married. The family owned and operated twenty thousand supermarkets nationwide. That was my husband's family. Unless it was a very rural area, there was at least one in your neighborhood. It was that famous and successful. Moreover, they branched out to the restaurant business and shopping center operations. They were rumored to be the best in the industry. I was quite nervous about marrying into a, such a family of tycoons, but my husband and his father gave me a warm welcome, and I was relieved. However, my mother-in-law, Camila, was a different story. She was very proud of her status, being the wife whose husband was in line to be the next CEO. She saw me. Who was raised in a single-parent household, with an ordinary background, as a stain in the family. It was natural for her to ignore me, who had a lower status than herself. I was treated as an insignificant person. Her way of oppressing me was terrible. I managed to put up with it. However, it escalated by one incident. My menu design was chosen to be used for one of the popular restaurants in the shopping center where the family managed. I graduated from a design school, which I applied to my current job, so I was a little confident. Camila also studied a bit of design before, but her entry was included in the first round. I let you win this time. You should thank me. She was mortified by losing against me, and acted like a sore loser. She started resenting me since then. She couldn't stand me in the spotlight, and her harassment got worse and worse. To begin with, she had only taken a short design course once. I think she was too arrogant to assume that she couldn't have won against me, who had studied hard and learned the skills in school. She started visiting my husband Wayne and me at home, just to say sarcasm and petulant insults. Sally, you haven't cleaned off the dust before the shelves. Soon as she entered the house, she looked for anything against me to say. Always had the house ostensibly tidy and neat, so she looked for tiny details like behind the shelves. The fridge eggs are burned. What kind of discipline have you received to be okay with such a mess? Wayne, who actually burned the eggs, said, "It was me." With an offensive tone, he didn't mind helping me out with cooking, so we naturally shared our daily tasks. She picked on her son's little mistake, which came right back to her. She seemed a bit awkward, but. Sally, you forced him to cook, didn't you? What a wife! I always took perfect care of my husband and never slacked on cooking and chores. She changed the subject and criticized me. Even though Wayne tried to stop her, she continued until I apologized. I'm sorry. I always ended up apologizing for what I was not sure of. And then she usually put on a satisfactory smile and finally left. Wayne understood my hardship and was also tired of his own mother. I'm sorry about her. He apologized to me every time. No worries. I just need to put more effort into housework. It's true that I'm giving you a lot more than I should. No way. It's her fault. No matter what, I need to protect you more. I had to confirm him and tell him that he was doing his best. 
he had consulted with his father about his mother's harassment, but I supposed he had forgotten about his busy schedule. From the way she hadn't changed a bit. Well, I just needed to not take it too seriously. I had hoped that she would be softer as he aged, so that I had never imagined that she would do something like that. When Wayne's cousin had a baby, a celebration was planned. Thanksgiving Day was chosen for the occasion. To introduce as many family members, it was set to coincide with the big gathering. Family of the cousin was a well-known confectionery, so the number of relatives to join was over eighty people. It was a family tradition to celebrate extravagantly. Hence. Distant relatives were also invited. The day after Wayne told me about the celebration, Camilla called me. It's a big celebration, so I'll order some extra dishes from the Michelin restaurant. But it's a tradition to cook the main dishes with the family, so I have a suggestion for you. You used to brag about how good a cook you are. I was a bit annoyed with the sarcastic tone of her voice, but I was confident with the taste of food, since I helped at my dad's restaurant. Wayne also praised that I was a pro chef. I remember that I did mention it to her a while back. Don't embarrass the family, okay? You're in charge of the turkey and stuffing. Before I could answer, she hung up the phone. I let out a sigh and thought she was just being her normal self. I rearranged my schedule until the day and started searching for the recipes. My turkey was going to be compared with Michelin's dishes, so I must choose my ingredients carefully. I felt burdened with the nuisance. Then came the Thanksgiving Day. Camilla usually tried to meddle with me from time to time, but she had been quiet since the call. I was feeling very uncanny. After all, it was the calm before the storm. At 11 a.m., I was working at the office when I got a call from her. That event was in two hours at 1 p.m., so she must have been busy overseeing the final setup. I worried that there was something wrong. I answered the phone, feeling unsettled. I tasted your turkey and stuffing. I can't let anyone eat something so disgusting. I didn't know you could only cook nothing but a supermarket ready-made food. Rats won't even touch it. She immediately yelled over the phone. Wait, wait, wait. Some ready-made food was at a high level, and she was a part of the family who was selling exactly that. She, of all people, shouldn't have made fun of supermarkets, right? It was so bad that I threw them away after taking a bite. You better prepare another one. Don't you dare go and buy from the supermarket. It's gross. I couldn't quite grasp what was going on while she continued yelling in high-pitched voice. I said in my confusion, "I'm working at the office right now. I'm in the middle of rushing to finish a job that came in the last minute." I started my current situation. I don't care. We don't have time. You better come over here and prepare something right away. That's your important job. She was out of control. There was something she had misunderstood. She must have not been informed that there was a change with the person in charge of cooking today. I did take up the task, but I was assigned to another job for a reason. Threw away the turkey. It was prepared by. <laughs> I tried to clear my mind and calmly say it. Please listen. I've been working at the office since this morning. I was no longer in charge of cooking, so I had free time. What? Then who made that? She sounded stunned and was having a hard time understanding. 
I heard her gasp, and what are we going to do? We only have two hours left. She ranted. Whatever you want to do, it's already too late. This is your fault. You didn't inform me. You must do something, or else I will tell everybody you threw out the turkey away. She became hysterical when the reality bit. I couldn't have her telling everyone such a lie, so that I had no choice but to rush to my in-law's house. The road was heavily congested by the holiday traffic. When I finally arrived, it was a little past noon, about one hour before the event. I had already told Wayne about the call. So he hastily ran over to me, looking pale. All the dishes are set up except the main. It's thrown in the trash, and everyone is confused as to who could have done such a terrible thing. He explained to me as we entered the room, where the atmosphere was as tense as a crime scene. Camilla must have been desperate. That as soon as she saw me, it's her, Sally, who threw it away. It's say that the murder returns to the scene of the crime. She wasn't here before, so she must be the culprit. She started yelling incomprehensible things. I could foresee what was to come, so I asked Wayne for a favor. The turmoil of Camilla continued. What have you done, Sally? Just because you're from an ordinary background, you don't have to resent a distinguished family. It's disgusting that you would go to such lengths. You are evil. She screamed at me. Around us were Wayne's grandmother, aunts, uncles, cousins, their wives, and other relatives. Who had gathered here in the commotions? They all looked at me with reproachful eyes, believing what she had said. I calmly explained, "It wasn't me who trashed the dish. I had no reason to do so." Camilla quickly objected, "Who else would do such a thing? Only an ungrateful person like you can spoil the celebration." She ranted. I kept my cool and calmly denied her delusional accusation. I was working at the office this morning. If you don't believe me, please check with my colleagues. That's when Camilla called and told me that she threw away the food. How dare she! Not only she looks down on me, but she accuses me of such a terrible sin. She appealed to everyone around us while she pretended to cry. I wouldn't have thought that anyone would believe her performance in the normal case, but this was different. Camilla, who had been a member of the family for the past twenty years, had more trust compared to me. The blame was still on me. On the third, I retorted, "That's." Asked my colleagues to prove that I was at the office all morning, then I would be cleared from the false accusation. It would prove Camilla's lie. When I decided to fight back, the savior I had been waiting for appeared. I asked Sally to take some of my jobs. It was an urgent request, but she took it up willingly. It was Jim, my father-in-law. Behind him stood Wayne with a relieved look on his face. Right, I had asked him for a favor to get a hold of his dad earlier. Jim was going to miss the celebration because his business schedule was packed. When he heard that I was in trouble with his wife and relatives, he rushed back home. I was confident to clear my name without him. But the influence of the next head of the family was more powerful. Yea, let the counterattack begin. His explanation turned all the suspicion to Camilla. Sally, is it true what she said to you over the phone? He asked. It is. 
Camila tasted the food and thought it was disgusting, so she threw it away. She said I could only cook nothing but a supermarket ready-made food. Rats won't even touch it. Isn't that right, Camila? Relatives clamored. Camila's face was getting whiter. Really, we don't treat our products as food for rats. Jim's words caused a stir among the people. Suddenly, a sob ran out. It was one of the cousins, Emily, who was holding a baby. I practice cooking very hard for today, but how terrible it turns out this way! My husband praised it and said it was delicious. She lost her face because of Camilla's confusion. Her desperate plea echoed in everyone's mind. It was Emily who had taken up my task this time. She was the star of the celebration, but since everyone was coming to meet her baby, she wanted to return her favor. She told me that she wanted everyone to enjoy her food. I readily agreed and taught her how to cook. After Jim, who was usually strict about the taste, gave thumbs up, we welcome this day. She told me to keep it secret as she wanted to surprise everyone, but I didn't expect her to keep it from Camilla, who was in charge of the celebration. Never mind. Emily's food was bad. That was why you threw it away, right? Camilla was agitated by Jim's rage. No, I didn't know it was Emily's. Shut up, whoever made it. It's unacceptable to just throw away food. Besides, Emily is one of the chefs who works at my restaurant. You're saying that my taste is wrong for letting her work there? No way! I never meant that way. It was too late to deny it now. You did it yourself. Emily worked at a Japanese restaurant in a shopping center, where Jim managed. Even though it was a traditional American cuisine she had to cook this time, her skill was top notch. Although I was the one teaching her at first, she easily surpassed my skill in the perfect roast. She had to teach me French cuisine at the end. Moreover, her French cooking had been endorsed by Jim. Camilla had no talent in cooking to have criticized Emily's food. She actually had weird taste buds. She once told me, "Not enough sugar in these mashed potatoes. You should add lots of sugar to the meat sauce." She once gave me misguided advice from a superior point of view. Yes, Camilla had a palate that made all her dishes very sweet. Jim, while reflecting on his own ignorance in spoiling his wife. I guess everything tasted bad except for sweet food," he sighed. Camilla begged for Jim's forgiveness, but it was not him she should have apologized to. It was Emily. Camilla, you're apologizing to the wrong person. Besides, throwing away perfectly good food is unspeakable. Apologize to the people who favor the food I create. I blurted out of my frustrations. Camilla showed no remorse, and grabbed my shoulders with a menacing look on her face. I thought it was yours. The food made by the low class from a single parent like you shouldn't be served on the upper class table. If I knew it was Emily's, I wouldn't have thrown it away. It's all your fault. You conspired this. It was Wayne's aunt. Who scolded Camilla's obscenity? You know I'm divorced, right? I can't believe you look down on single parent. I guess you think I'm despicable too. Besides, there are few single parents here. You're degrading us all, right? She went hard on Camilla. No, that's not it. I'm only taking about Sally. She argued, but the aunt's anger 
Helen cooled down. I love hearing from you. I see your true color now. I've never liked you anyway. You've always been so pretentious. Camilla trembled and crumbled down to the floor. At that point, a deep roar filled the room. What's all this fuss? I was looking forward to the celebration. The voice of dignity was an old man in a wheelchair. I couldn't remember who he was, but Wayne noticed my confusion and said, "You met him at our wedding." This man of all people was the current CEO and the grandfather of Wayne. It is unforgivable to throw away food. Every dish is filled with the chef's heart and soul. Anyone who treats it with disrespect should be prepared to suffer the consequences. He spoke quietly, but with a tone of persuasion, and continued, "My late wife." God blessed her. Struggled to eat when she was a child. Her family was poor. She caught fish and wild rabbits herself to eat, but she eventually became ill. At such a time, a farmer she knew brought pumpkins for her. The sweetness of the pumpkin reminded her of the late grandmother, whom she lost earlier that year. At that moment. She felt the presence of the Almighty. Everyone was listening intently to the narrative of the head of the family. Every food is cooked with the feeling of those involved. She often said fondly that she was comforted by the kindness of the ones who prepared them. He stopped there and looked at each person in the room. And then continued to say, "It's unthinkable for the family who has been trading virus foods to mistreat them. Surely, none of this is so disgraceful." Of course not, Jim replied, and everyone else nodded in agreement. Camilla was the only one who was frozen in the time. After this incident. Jim realized that she wasn't good for him and the family, and decided to divorce her. There was no one who upset his decision. Camilla, who was proud of her status, understood the absolute authority of the head of the family, and didn't fight against divorce. Not only she ruined the celebration, but her misconduct with the food was heavily blamed. She could do nothing but weep and apologize. She received a small amount of alimony and was kicked out of the house. Afterward, she moved into a public nursing home. She was famous for being pretentious, so the rumor of her being kicked out of the family spread quickly, and no one in the home wanted to be friends with her. For someone who had her share of extravagance of all those years, it must have been such a humiliation. She brought what goes around comes around onto herself. It was way too late for her to regret what if. I feel no sympathy toward her. Following my grandfather-in-law's teaching, with gratitude for food and love for my husband. I prepared a meal for Wayne today.